Hey everyone, and welcome back to another video. Today, we're going to be breaking down the Heart of Azeroth system, including what it is, how it works, what Azerite gear is, how it works, how you can increase the item level of your Heart of Azeroth, and an artifact power farming guide that is updated for this expansion. So, let's just get rolling, and basics first, what is it? Well, the Heart of Azeroth is the new artifact light progression system of this expansion. Of course, you will have noticed you got it at the start of the X-Pack, and it will level up over the course of the expansion. So, what does it do? Well, the main function of the Heart of Azeroth is that it will empower Azerite gear, which I'll cover in a bit. Then the item level of it and its secondary stats will increase through two mechanisms. First, it will gain two item levels every time you increase its rank. Second, every reputation level that you get with the Champions of Azeroth faction will give you plus 15 item levels on it with the exception of Exalted, which instead gives you a 355 bit of Azerite gear. So what is Azerite gear? Well, Azerite gear is extremely important in BFA. Every head, shoulder, and chest piece in this expansion is Azerite gear. Now, each bit of Azerite gear has traits. There are three rings of traits, and on each ring you can select one trait. Now, the unlock requirement for each ring is based off the item level of the gear. So so Heroic Dungeon Gear will have a relatively low Heart of Azeroth power requirement, but say Mythic Raid Gear will have a relatively high HOA power requirement. Finally, Azerite Gear does not Titan Forge, and it comes primarily from fixed, non-infinitely grindable sources. So overall, you want to look at the Heart of Azeroth power requirements for the content that you're likely going to be doing, and you'll want to set those power requirements as your goal, with perhaps Mythic Raiders wanting to get to like level 25 to 28. So how do you level up the Heart of Azeroth? Well, as with Legion, the Heart of Azeroth is an artifact that is leveled up with artifact power. The amount of artifact power needed per level increases with each level, and it begins to increase exponentially after its 10th level, just like with Legion's artifact. Simple enough, uh, so let's talk about sources and then work out the most time efficient way to get artifact power. So first up, Island Expeditions are a massive source of AP. There's a weekly quest that will give you 2,500, then winning a Mythic or PvP Island Expedition nets uh, 300, a Heroic is 225 and a normal is 175. Then Warfronts also give you artifact power, but they won't be active for a few weeks. The weekly quest gives you 750, while the weekly contribution quests give you 500. And then winning a Warfront gives you 150, and the rares in Arathe give you 20. Then World Quests continue to be a very solid source of them. Uh, World Quest bosses net you 500, emissaries default 400, however, they can have another 600 as a bonus, equaling a total of 1000. And the Champions of Azeroth faction is worth slightly more. As for world quests, they drop between 100 and 400 each, and again, the Champions of Azeroth ones will give you slightly more. Now, dungeons also drop AP, so the final boss of a Mythic dungeon is 150, and regular Mythic bosses are 35, meaning that a 4-boss Mythic dungeon gives you 255 AP. Then the final boss of a Heroic is 90, while other bosses drop 35. Now, what matters, though, is that the first daily Heroic drops a bonus 300. The normal dungeons do drop AP, but I just don't really think they're worth doing, to be honest. Now, the mission table also is a good steady stream of artifact power quests. And then as for PvP, well, random BGs are 76 for a win, while your first win of the day is 151. Skirmishes drop 16, and finally, epic battlegrounds drop 300. And then war mode airdrops will give you 300 if you're able to loot them. Overall, PvP is maybe not the most ideal source of AP. And then um, there's plenty of one-off sources like the war campaign quests and the leveling quests. But let's talk about the fastest ways to farm it. So Blizzard's overall design intent is that you should have plenty to do before you have to go grinding them via infinitely um, repeat sources, but when you do, they want Island Expeditions to be the infinitely repeatable source because they think they're more fun because of the randomized nature. Let's start off with weekly things to do. So weekly, you want to do your Island Expedition quest. That will earn you a large surge of AP. Then you will want to do your weekly warp front. Of course, that won't be active for a few weeks into the expansion. And um, then you'll want to get all of your weekly mythic dungeons done. It's not the most amazing source of Azerite, but you'll want that gear anyway. And it's a pretty good source of Azerite. Um, so yeah, it's worth doing. Plus, you'll need the Azerite gear. You'll also want want to be sure to get the world boss done as it drops 500 AP. So next, let's talk about daily sources. First, the daily heroic dungeon is actually very time efficient, so if you really care about AP, you should consider doing it. Then clearing your emissaries is a pretty good idea. If you wanted to be really time efficient, you could batch this task to being every three days, but doing so would miss out on a fair few regular world quests and the AP that come fr uh, comes from those. Uh, so if you have the time, then I would say clear out the map of world quests on a daily basis. Then you'll want to focus on getting your mission board team going. This is not a massive source of AP, but it's quite a bit and it's definitely worth doing. So that is your weekly checklist and your daily checklist. 
Once that's done though, let's talk about infinite farming. So we'll need to wait and see what Mythic Plus dungeon AP rewards are like, but we do know that Blizzard does not want a repeat of the Maw triple chest run situation, um, and that, you know, their intended infinitely grindable source of AP is supposed to be the Island Expedition. So a good team can probably knock out four Mythics per hour. That would be 1200 AP per hour, which is pretty decent. Past that, there's a few one-time sources, such as regular questing, as well as some one-offs, like say the Tortolan Scrolls quest, um, and then you can come across random quests on the island expeditions which are worth 700 each. Now you um, might look at this curve and you might get a bit sad but you've got to remember that the catch-up system is in place and it makes it a lot more sane reality. So let's talk about catch-up. Back in Legion, we got a weekly multiplier to our artifact power gains. This eventually led to us getting billions of AP from quests. Well, in BFA, they went in the other direction, where the AP requirements of the Heart of Azeroth decreased by 30% per week. The numbers will feel pretty similar, but the difference is the Blizzard will avoid having tremendously large numbers. So just like with Legion, it means there's significant diminishing returns to going mad and grinding it up every week. Catching up, like with Legion, should be quite fast. Now, sure, Mythic Raiders are probably going to go insane, but regular players do not not have to worry all that much. Anyone who say took a three month break from Legion and then came back to find millions or billions of easy AP, uh, they'll know what I'm talking about here. So for the most part, I would say just make your way through the daily and weekly checklist. Personally, I'm probably not going to spend that much time grinding the infinitely repeatable stuff, um, because for me, that's when the diminishing returns kind of kick in, and I think that's sort of Blizzard's intent. Next, let's cover Azerite Gear's sources. I just think it's good to go over this. So once you ding, you'll be able to farm as much of it as you want through random uh, normals and heroics. Now, uh, the world quests will also drop them, but at an item level, it's a little bit lower than the world quest cap. Past item level 325, there are no infinitely grindable fast ways of getting Azerite gear. It's it's all from lockout based content. So regular mythic dungeons drop 340 and that's weekly. You can get 340 from the M series. Then continuing up the mythic plus ladder, the gear increases from 340 to 385, but only from the weekly chest. It does not drop from the regular end of dungeon chest because again, Blizzard does not want it to be infinitely farmable. Now that said, the drop rate is supposed to be pretty high from the end of week chest. So that should balance out. But yeah, basically it just means it's a like a weekly thing. Now, of course it comes from raids. Old year LFR is 340, normal 355, Heroic is 370, and Mythic is 385. Now past that, you can craft a 340 Azerite Helm from Engineering, and then the Champions of Azeroth Faction has a 355 as a bit of Azerite gear from an Exalted Rep. Now the Warfront Weekly is also a potential source of 370 Azerite gear, and that's kind of it. Uh, right now, the best thing you can do is get a 340, say, chest and shoulders, or basically just a full set of 340s, and then the 1355 from the Champions of Azeroth Faction. But of course, once raids unlock, you'll be able to get way better stuff. Let's talk about tools though, because managing Azerite can be a little bit tricky, especially when it comes down to uh, just working out what's optimal, but there are some handy tools that I just want to let you uh, know about. So first, if you want to filter Azerite gear by trait type, then Wowhead's Azerite Power Finder is an extremely useful tool. It'll let you sort gear by power quite, um, quite easily to, you know, just see what powers you want. Now, if you want some advice, then Icy Veins, who sponsored my class review series, um, they have updated their class guides to contain sections on recommended Azerite traits, including like recommended builds, and some priorities. And then finally, I would recommend Ask Mr. Robots. Um, I do have a premium subscription with them. Uh, I think I think their free tier does have uh, most of this stuff in it. Um, I've got no like relationship with them in terms of like business stuff. I've just used their tool since um, at least since the start of WAD. But their um, just their character analysis tools and their simulator can be kind of they can be quite useful for quickly simming your character to uh, just find out stuff like this. So I recommend checking out that tool as well to help you manage this system. And then finally, you can actually reforge your um, Azerite gear. Now, it's just that a vendor called a reforger. All that it does is it resets what traits you have selected. Now, I believe if you keep on doing that every week, uh, like within a week, it will get more and more expensive, but the, that um, like the ratcheted up fee will then decrease after the weekly reset. So it's a bit of a strange mechanic. Uh, Blizzard doesn't really want you talenting these on the fly or anything. So yeah, that's what's up. That's basically the situation with Azerite gear. Essentially, there's some resources if you want to learn about the gear, sim out your character, get some advice, and then a daily and weekly checklist of the content that you should do um, and that will pretty much be sorted in terms of this system. So I hope you found this video useful. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you next time.